<laughs> All right. Well, welcome to Rambling. I'm Peter Canale. I'm Ryan Irving. And it's been a while. It's been a good two and a half months, but we're back. We're back in a different room and back with a very special person. And that person is the A Train. Woo woo! What's Mr. up, Mr. Newell? Yo yo yo! What's going on, fellas? <laughs> what's going on, Mr. Newell? <laughs> Not much. Thank you for having me on this podcast today. Been looking forward to it for quite oh, some well, we're time. Ba- mm. we're, res- we're we very actually happy we actually invited him an hour earlier. An hour ago, yeah. yeah so that quick you know, flight. Show, that the, quick the, flight. The, mm. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh. <laughs> oh, we playing some toast out here. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so Mr. Newell, I, let's hope you have no. You any, uh, no, you got you got right, things in right. front of you. So you, you know, I want to start it with the hard hitting questions. Yes. All right, all right. The people want to know. The people of Fordham Prep need to know. Mm-hmm. Who is better at sports, you or Mr. McLaughlin? Ooh, Ooh. we went there. I did. All right. We're not afraid. I know that's a straightforward question, Mr. Mr. McLaughlin. He's great at baseball. He's great at basketball, you understand? And also, he's a Bronx kid as well. So, uh, I'm also a Bronx kid. So, the fact that playing basketball in the neighborhood, football, and I love playing rugby, we have our different, you know, skills and types. So, if you ask me to play baseball, I'll, I'll uh, be the last guy batting up. So, um I would say that I'm I'm the better one at sports. You know, I'll say that Ooh. I'm the better one. I'm the better one. So, you know. Yo, we love the confidence. We're just going to cut out yeah. everything he said before that and just leave I am better at sports. Just, just you know, it's that. confidence. Confidence. That's all that matters. We have possibly mission? see a 1v1 in the future. Well, Absolutely. Ooh. We could definitely do that. Mr. McLaughlin, you, you, you heard it here first. 1v1. <laughs> Mr. McLaughlin. <laughs> Don't be scared uh, now, man. Don't be scared. Mr. McLaughlin's my boy. He's my boy. <laughs> nah, he's a man. He's a man. Peter, you wanna you wanna take one? Um, well, you know, piggybacking off of that question, out of all the sports that you are very talented at, which one is maybe your favorite? Rugby. 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 Uh, the reason why I say rugby is because one, I'm a very humble individual. You know, there's moments where you know how sometimes people get frustrated and you know, some people do certain therapy or they go to the gym. Like, I go to the gym, but rugby is, like, my opening just to go on the field, run around, loosen up, put some hard hits on individuals. When I, just, I tell them afterwards, I didn't mean it. But, you know, that build up of a frustration. But it's a joy and a love of the game. Uh, rugby, I've been playing it for since college for a good, I want to say, what, we're talking about eight years now, eight, nine years. I started as a sophomore at SUNY Albany. Shout out, Great Danes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, gr- rugby is a great sport for me, and I'm just waiting till we get back to the to the pitch, you know, because I understand with COVID regulations, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's keeping us off the field. But, you know, I'm just hitting the gym, keeping myself in shape, and just game ready, always mm-hmm. game ready. You played rugby as like a club sport in college? Yeah, so I played as a club sport. I uh, wish it was a varsity sport. That's what the NCAA, you know, decided to recognize a few schools about. But it's a club sport. But played at SUNY Albany. Then I came home. Um, I thought I was going to stop the game because I did dislocate my right hip in my senior year of college. Uh, took a hard hit September uh, 21st, 2012, one ten p.m. I remember that day. Um and now I came back home, and now I play for Old Blue Rugby, Old Blue Rugby, who branched off at Columbia University, which under uh, six undergrads has started it, and then they created the the men's team. So, very competitive club today. Yeah. Well, rugby's one of those sports. It's kind of like in the same vein as football. It's just that that real, you know, just two people, two groups of people going at it. You know, two groups of people, but one has no equipment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I feel like rugby, like when you're a kid, like everyone could inc- like encourage you to play football. Like I didn't even know about rugby that much until like my freshman year here, because like I went to like a small public school, like we didn't mm-hmm. have a rugby program, and like I don't know, did do, do most public schools have rugby programs? So when I got into college, uh, I knew a few people that was uh, much younger than me that they were in their senior year of high school. Uh, rugby started to come around into the neighborhood. Um, You got New York Rugby Club, which I knew a bunch of uh, friends of mine played for. And it started to grow then. Now today, 
you know, we have Fordham Rugby, Xavier Rugby, you know, there's other schools that are producing rugby clubs. Bishop Lachlan, which is a big basketball school out in Brooklyn, they decided to perform a rugby club because now they're seeing that what it is, rug, uh, in sports, everybody else to go for the traditional sports, basketball, football, you know, baseball. Rugby gives you that opportunity to go somewhere. So there's a lot of kids, like inner city kids like myself, where, you know, it helps to keep them off the streets. So they go into playing rugby club. Mm -hmm. And that's how a lot of kids are able to aim to achieve a scholarship in college. So they'll go to the University of Arkansas, Arizona University, Syracuse, because they have the talent. So because we kept them off the streets and, you know, put into the rugby club to use utilize their talents and play the game and find a sport that they love. Rugby is an opportunity to just better yourself as a human being. And that's the beauty of all sports, really. To keep, Abs- absolutely. To keep that discipline and like rugby. I, uh, from my limited knowledge, you mm-hmm. gotta be you gotta be really strong. You gotta be really fast. You gotta be you gotta know the game very well. Like there's not much leeway in in rugby. Like it's very competitive. Very competitive. I mean, you're talking about my size at two ten, about what I'm five ten, five eleven, give or take, and there's moments where I had to go up against guys that were 6'5", 260. And you see, like, the game of football, how you have offense and defense. It's like everybody's an offense or defensive player. And have I taken some good shots <laughs> that I try to tackle some big guys? <laughs> yeah. But you know, but some good shots, right? it, it, it led to when I got home on maybe Sunday the next day, I'm in my bed and I couldn't get up because my body was in shock. It was aching. Damn. You know, so it is there's some brutal moments in there. You got to get ready mm. for practice by Tuesday coming. So you're going to Tuesday either banged up because you won't get ready for the next Saturday game. So mm. you just got to have the drive and love for it. Yeah. Sure. So when you're practicing during the week, is that kind of the same as football, how they have game plan meetings like, um, you know, Wednesdays and Thursdays leading up and then Friday's quite a, sort of an easier day and then you go, you go for your game day on Saturday? So with, with rugby, um, we'll have like a Tuesday and Thursday practice mm. and you got to come in like ready to go. You know, coach is not looking for you to waste uh, his time and then, you know, players are not looking to waste their own time because, you know, we have – now we're all adults – and we're coming home. We're coming. We're going to practice after work all day. So by the time we have a seven o'clock practice at night, for two hours or so, it's like Tuesday. You're you're, you're nitpicking what happened on the, the the previous game, but then after like a half hour, you move forward to run drills, and then you go into structure play, and then by Thursday, you're you're going to structure play, but you're trying to find out what's your game plan for the next opponent coming Saturday. Mm-hmm. So it's like you have to be ready. Like your mind is like on the go 24-7. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah. then another piggyback off of that. Mm-hmm. As a, you, you are also a coach here at Fordham in basketball and rugby. Am, am, I, am I right? So, I saw lacrosse at too. How did you coach lacrosse? So you know what's funny? I actually started JV uh, basketball assistant coach uh, 2013. Uh, as you guys might know, uh, Coach Ward here. Mr. Mm-hmm. Ward, uh, he brought me in, who was my former elementary school teacher, so I'd known him for oh, quite what? some time. Oh, yeah. I know that. That's sick. Um, so he brought me in to, because I played basketball in elementary school, but I didn't play high school. But, mm-hmm. you know, he brought me in to be, like, the strength and conditioning coach. And I said, all right, I'll get my feet wet of, you know, relearning. Even though I watched the NBA and college ball, but just playing the game in high school just to see how that level is. And, you know, you just say, like, it's just, like, every other action sport out there, you know, it's the same movement patterns. It just, one is a little bit different where it's indoors, you're shooting. So I've been here since 2013 of, of coaching JV basketball. And I also now strength, strength and conditioning, uh, lacrosse, varsity baseball. So it's, it's been a journey so far. Mm. It's been a journey so far. So my, so my question is like, what is, what is the key to kind of getting the best out of a player? Like when they can't really go for that extra five pounds on, on their deadlift, like what, what, what's like a motivating thing that you always do as a coach to try to push your players beyond? So you never ever want to, the thing about in being a weight room, you never talk down to an athlete or, you know, you mm-hmm. say you can't do it. You, you gotta, you gotta look to do it because the fact that if you don't want to progress, you know, sometimes you might not look to 
get over your plateau of wanting to get stronger or wanting to increase uh put more force and like power into your into your um into your lifts because it transfer overs into your sports that you play uh what i would do is you know positive reinforcement just say like you know you did well on this on this lift but you know if you're not able to get it today there's always a next time mm -hmm. you're gonna have to try attack it until you're able to reach that you know say 365 you know if you could do a five t uh five sets of five right and then you did five sets of uh five you did four sets of five but on the last set you did four reps you look to attack it about two three days later again once you get that five by five then you could go up to 370. so there's a pattern where it's living uh it's like periodization where you you look to work a certain weight and then you increase but when you work other muscles in your body in the other lifts it will help push that that uh, um that specific exercise up so I'm sorry, Ryan. I kind of no, yeah, no. yeah, I've been taking it over. You can let's go. talk. Let's talk food. This is a all first right. Almost, this is like a food podcast. That's what I'm talking about. This we is all. This is all we've been we talking about. An episode without going ten minutes talking about food. We gotta talk um, about food. Right. Okay. We did thirty minutes of food last time. All right, Mr. Newell. Yes, sir. You gotta eat one kind of food for the rest of your life. Oh, what is that food? Oh man. Not meal. Like you can't just like eat like pasta forever. Like you gotta pick one kind. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, just one meal yeah. or one food. Man, that's a tough one. You have one. Yours is Italian, right? I think well, we've been yeah, I, I can't. I can't not. It'd be yeah. like I, I, I would be exiled. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't. What would be? Oh man. Ooh. Barbecue brisket. Mm, that's a good choice. <laughs> that kind of that's a good choice. <laughs> that's a. Hey. You just li breakfast, lunch, and dinner, Mr. Newell. Hey, you can have that. Could get that strict protein and, and good fats from barbecue it. Barbecue brisket. Well, you know, does that does that come with the um, the just barbecue brisket? Nothing else. Nothing else. You no can't exception. no no side. No exception. No no not on the bread either. Yeah, no no bread. No, that's no, okay. No, you get on the roll. You, know you get the roll. Yeah, I you might, get the roll. I might not even need the roll. I just need the protein. <laughs> I just need the protein. You know? It's all about that protein. I don't know. I mean, I'd probably go with Mexican or Chinese food. Now, see, if you say specific cultures. No, cult yeah, that's oh, cultures. Oh, cultures? Uh, yeah, no, that's what oh. I said. Not a meal. Pick a culture, yeah. Oh, Mexican. Mexican all day. We talk about, wait, favorite Mexican place? Taco Bell or Chipotle? <sighs> Chipotle isn't the answer to this problem, so. I will. <sighs> Chipotle is expensive. It, it is, is expensive. Taco I really never have, like, I probably ate Taco Bell once in my life because I didn't really have the necessary, like, drive for it. No, I actually I actually minutes. go to, I like going to, not cha no chain restaurants. I like to go to an authentic mm. Mexican spot yeah. and get, because I know it'll be good it'll and be authentic, good. Yeah, no, you know? I so I, I find my, my little spots out here that I get to go to, and I'm saying I'm going to have my quesadilla, or chimichanga, yeah, <laughs> you know. So yeah, whatever you're feeling. That yeah, day. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Not a local Mexican place, then. Or if it's a your local favorite. Mexican pl people from Fordham are from all over. I know. What I'm just <laughs> saying, Lo local for you. Isn't Chipotle well, if I, if if I say favorite, I don't want the whole neighborhood yeah, exactly. to end up being mm. there. So I don't he, know. Does, I don't he, know. <laughs> he doesn't want it to be overcrowded. It's his spot, you know. Yeah. I mean, I know Shan is caring, but uh, I don't know. Not yet. Not yet. Not, That's not yet. No, I wait, agree with that. Can I just really quickly, because you said you've only had it once in your life, I need to put you on. When this is over, like before uh -huh. practice, get a Crunch Wrap Supreme Crunch from Wrap Taco Supreme. Bell. You know, I see it on the commercial a lot, and I'm like, I it's can make. I, I know I can make that at home myself. What's that? What's too. that one? Was just like we, cheese no, with dad, cheese I, with I'm, cheese. What, it's like what? the one's like a. It's just cheese. It's a taco with just cheese in it, and then there's another cheese taco. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> just cheese. Oh, no, no, it's, no, it's, no. A, it's melted cheese on the taco, and then there's cheese inside of it. A cheese. Yeah, I didn't it, know that was a thing. It's a thing. But, but no, I, I made I made a crunch after with my dad like last week. It was it was better than the one at Taco Bell. It was insane. You're thinking but, of the cheesy gordita crunch. Yes. Because it, it's it's a soft shell with cheese, and then the crunchy shell in the middle. I have a cousin who goes to Chipotle and just gets mm. cheese on a tortilla, and he wraps it and just eats the cheese. You well, must just go buy a, a flour tortilla and then put the cheese well, on yourself. You know what? You think that's bad? We, there is someone in this room mm -hmm. who eats mashed potatoes <laughs> with ketchup. Can we, like oh! Ketchup on the mashed. Wait, 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 wait. 
That's good to do. Oh, that's <laughs> yes, that's Addy, no Listen, way. listen, listen. We did not. Listen, no, we did listen, not. listen. No, Mr. No. At first, I was going to say I thought it was a culture thing, but hey, if somebody else in this room loves ketchup and mashed potatoes, you you on the right track because especially when you make meatloaf, meatloaf and mashed potatoes, you know, you throw a little ketchup on it and maybe some hot sauce. I mean, hey, it is what it is. I, you got to taste it. You got to taste it. It's great. It it's not as bad. It's not as bad. He's pulling up. He's certainly pulling up a picture. Mr. Newell. Well, see, that's an overload. Yeah, that's just... that's an over. That's too much. Yeah. I was talking about like a little squirt, and then you just stir it in. You, you stir it. You mix it in. So it's one. Yeah, it's you know, one pink. Not a giant uh, of overload of ketchup in the mashed potato. Yeah, Ryan, yeah that's just too much. Ryan is trying to but Miami see, I just want. I just wanted to clarify for the viewers that they should not, you know, be influenced to. Do something. The opinions of Colin do not reflect the opinions of his employers. Uh, what else? You got you, you, you want one, Peter? Well, I wanted to keep going on that because, okay. like, the defense I see for that is because you, you put ketchup on fries mm. and fries mm. are potatoes, but like it's just com- two completely different that's the things. Worst logic. That's the that's, I mean, it's it's a it is it did come up. It's it is a potato at the end of the day. I know. One I, is one is fried and one is yeah, all you know, mashed potato, up. Baked potato, baked potato with sour cream, right? Yes. N- French fries with sour cream. Does that make any okay, sense? Okay, so I, so then when you roast roasted potatoes, mm-hmm. I throw sometimes ketchup a little on. ketchup. Yeah, on no, it. yeah, but but a baked but see the baked potato, you know, you gotta keep it with the sour, you know, the mm-hmm. sour cream, the ancho, whatever mm-hmm. the the, yeah, the, the yeah. scallions and how Wendy's has it, you know. But listen, don't don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> you know, what? maybe maybe we should get Ryan to try it one of these days. Yeah, maybe we'll bring it into a podcast. Just we'll, br- we'll bring it just a little squirt, nothing too crazy, just a little <laughs> swing. You know, <laughs> just thinking about it, like that's <laughs> disgusting. Nice, nice watery tomato yeah. in your nice, mm. beautiful pile of mashed potatoes there. What else? We we we, we were talking about something earlier. Mm-hmm. You ever? Because I remember we, we played kickball in the snow and you were like playing with us. Yeah. You ever get like? Because I, I know you teach for, uh, coach freshman. You ever mm-hmm. get like too competitive in a game with your students? Like you ever like dunked on a freshman before? <laughs> Just like <laughs> so, I don't got hops like that. Oh, no. that's but um, yeah, you gotta bring the competition out. Mm. I'm like, you know, I know where my my time and place is. You know, you know, you, I can't overly do it, but you know, you gotta keep that competitive job because it also makes that kid want to be competitive. That's and, true. You know, that's true. It that's growing up, you know, especially in the '90s, just. It used to be like when you used to go outside for for during the cafeteria times, you know, I might be in seventh grade, then you got the eighth grade, it'll be a seventh versus eighth grade football game. And you're talking about mm-hmm. almost like fifteen versus fifteen in a <laughs> schoolyard. Meanwhile, where everybody's running around and it's like, yo, whoever gets knocked, that's that's not an awful, but you hope that you don't get in trouble by the teacher either. <laughs> yeah, nice. You know, but you know, it's that competitive job because once you have like siblings that, you know, they push you around and, and toughen you up, you just gotta just you just bring the competitive drive out of you. So, you know, with the guy, when with the kids here, you know, I compete, you know, and I just say. Is there like a standout play that one student made that's just like, what, like you just like, all right, I didn't see that coming from the kid? You ever have a student kid? just like, what just happened? Just completely, like, just completely ball We had out. that, we, there was a freshman, mm-hmm. who, I don't know if you remember, it was like two weeks ago, we played, ki- we played football okay. outside. And he was like an insane quarterback. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, just someone balling like, out, just A-day. someone balling out all on First you. half A-day. If you're out there listening Was he to this. about... He was like, a little short. Oh, he was short. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, we don't need to. We don't need to. But I, I was just, no, I'm just. Was asking, he like, wearing the Princeton hoodie? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah he was doing good. He went off. He carried our team. <laughs> and the, you know, it's funny. He didn't want to play. Uh, he didn't want to play quarterback until he started throwing the ball. I was like, uh, you know, you have the talent. You, you should have been there from the first place. I was like, you're trying to run a uh, Jason Garrett offense here. Ugh. Yeah. You don't know. talk to me about Jason Garrett. It's okay. I can't. I can't take that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, favorite movie. Go. We're going. Favorite with it? movie. Bad Boys. Bad Boys for Life or Bad Boys? I didn't even know that. The All original right, one. So that's that's Will Smith and then and uh, Martin Lawrence. Give it a so you gotta talk about it. Bad Boys, uh, Bad Boys Two, and Bad Boys for Life. I'm just a big Bad Boys fanatic. <laughs> the whole trilogy. The whole trilogy. <laughs> I could put on Bad Boys every day and watch it for the next thirty <laughs> days. You know, so. Uh, that's one of my that's my main main favorite, you know, trilogy. Um, 
definitely I always give it to Denzel Washington. Like I could just sit oh, and great. watch his one, movies great. like watching the Equalizer, Pelham One, Two, Three, mm. John Q. You know, I could watch any Denzel Man on Fire. Do I like there's moments when, you know, he doesn't survive in the movie. I don't like that, but you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. But that's the course the movie takes, man. Yeah. yeah, and then uh another movie, Any Given Sunday. Any Given Sunday is a football movie. Where oh, Al, I, Al Pacino, Jamie Foxx, L O Cool J. I haven't seen it, but scrolling through like Amazon or Netflix or whatever it's on. I've seen yeah. I've seen it. I've seen that uh Yeah. So So we have a new segment here on the show, and this show it's a top five of anything, right? Mm-hmm. Top five list. Me or Ryan will make it, and then whoever's not making the list, we'll try to guess the five the five uh, things on the list, and our guest will help guess them. Okay. So today I made the list, and today we have the top five sports movies. So this is just any sports movie you can think of. I can't even think of five sports movies. <laughs> there, there are more than five sports movies. I can't confirm that. Start off. I got I got one that's a shoe in because we watched it at a, we watched it at. Oh, the fr- the retreat. Freshman, the retreat. retreat. Yeah. Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans comes in at number two on the list. What's number one? Was, okay, well, I'll, 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 yeah. Don't, Coach Carter. Coach Carter was was heavily considered. Did not make it. Oh, ho, ho, ho. heavily wow. considered. It was it was it was fighting with that and number five, but number five beat it. Are up. these all popular movies? Like, we yeah, they're, they're popular movies. Yeah, they're not like underground movies. Most most great sports movies were made like nineties. I feel like. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Airbud. Wow. Uh, Airbud Air came out when, when I was small. The, the VHS. The VHS. Airbud was big. I can't even think. This might take too long. All right, all right, hold on. I'll give you. I'll give Just you. Give I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you the sport. I'll give you the sport. All right. The first one's a baseball movie. Third one's a football movie. The Jackie Robinson movie. That's 42? that's 42. number five. That's number five. Mm-hmm. That's number five. That was two a down. great movie. Okay. And then the fourth one's a boxing movie. Which if you can't get that, I mean, oh. there's a, there's a million. Rockies and two Creed's. Yeah, Rock. There you go. Which, which Rocky though? Uh, it, uh, Creed is in on it. Th- th- there's five Rockies. Which Rocky? <laughs> exactly. <that's> five Rockies. <laughs> Rocky one. Rocky two. Your Adrian. Rocky, three. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky four. four. Rocky, okay, Rocky four. The one where he beats up the Russian guy. That one. That one was oh, the that best one? one. Okay. That one was the best one. You, you haven't seen Creed two? I, I've seen all the Creeds. The oh, Creeds yeah. are good. I like those. I like those movies. Those are good movies. One more. Is there one more? You have two more. You have number one and number three: football and baseball. The football was it? Um, I'm blanking. This one's old. This one's old. Why am I thinking one that he was on the Nittany Lions team? No, this is college football. College football movie. You know it's not ringing, and I know the movie to it is not ringing in my head right now. Yeah, that's bad. That's you, know, you know it. Oh, oh he knows uh, it. You know it. The Blind Side. No, nope. I love that. No, movie. no, I love that movie. No, this Which one, is a, I like that movie too. Sir, certain K, sir, I'll give you a very, very, uh, Dude, a, f- a very famous. Movies. I'll give you a very famous speech. I know. He knows you're speech five foot heart. nothing, a hundred and nothing, and you want to go out and play football on this team? Oh man, I know. <laughs> that was not helpful for me. Um, it's not rigged. I know. That's embarrassing. Draft day. Draft no. Day was a great movie. I just watched that. That's a great movie. Did no, not he's not thinking about Draft Day not either. Th- that's br- that's the NFL. This is college football. The game plan starring Sir- Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> no, sir. Uh, about Rudy. 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 There Rudy. we go. Rudy. <laughs> God, I hope you realize there's a camera looking. There at you go. Kids. There you go. <laughs> Rudy. Oh. Rudy. That, that yeah, that's it. That's number three. And then number one, number one has not been found yet. Last time he just told us the number one. Because you, you guys couldn't get it that it was Shake Shack. I can't. I, I can't think of any other. <laughs> like, what, like, oh. So what sport? This is a baseball movie. Baseball movie about is a certain the, about it, a certain team in California. Oh. Mm-hmm. What movie is that? Give me Brad Pitt's in it. <laughs> oh, I didn't watch it because I would have, you know, I'd have said Hardball. Hardball almost uh, made that. Hardball. Well, it didn't make it. it. Didn't make it. I grew up on Hardball. Oh, you know what movie? You know what movie? Also, Major League. That was another one that I almost put Major in. Major League. That's a good movie. Wow. That might. Uh, no, nah, Major League's not on it. Major League's an amazing movie. They, were they gonna put the movie re- the replacements on it? <laughs> Baseball movie in California. Baseball movie California. Brad Pitt. I. I. It's not. It's not ringing. <laughs> baseball not birthday. That's not baseball birthday. <laughs> no. That's so embarrassing. I cannot believe right. you said that. You guys, you guys um, want, you guys want it? <laughs> yeah. Who is it? It's Moneyball. 
Moneyball. Oh the one, wow. The one where Brad Pitt plays the GM of the of the A's. And okay. He, and he's got he's the one who's got to make all the money. He's got to make the decisions, but he has no money. Mm. So. Tough sport to be in. Tough business. Yeah. All right. That's Peter's mm. top five for today. Uh, what did I want to talk about earlier? We talked about music a little bit, right? You like hip hop, right? Yeah, we, we yeah we talked about. Who's got a favorite favorite rapper? No, there's there's really no favorite rapper. I mean, I do like J Cole. Uh, what about what about Cauliflower? Who? Cauliflower. Rapper in the room. You ever heard of Cauliflower? You never heard of Cauliflower? Nah. Oh, oh. oh, how do you? That's feel? the biggest. That's the put on of the century. That's the right next there. big name in the industry. <laughs> you you better SoundCloud Cauliflower. But, um, Amazing. But like rappers, you know, J Cole, DMX, Jay Z. Eminem, uh, you talking about guys that you know? Anyone from your childhood really stick out? Back from like the nineties, bad nineties. I mean, I know you know there was Tupac and Biggie, you know, growing up. Um, definitely Jay Z, Nas, um, Kendrick. Kendrick was more so when when was it when I got into more late more into high school. Mm. Um, who else? Uh, Speaking of the Busta hype. Rhymes, mm. you know those 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 guys. Cause you know I'm trying to give the the new wave of hip hop today some some type of credit. <laughs> some of these guys are a little bit too mumble rappers, and I'm trying to you know can't hear, but you know <laughs> love I love I uh, as a New York New York born and raised Pop Smoke. Ooh. No, yeah. you know what sucks though. Like, yeah, I think he got really popular after he died, which is horrible. well. There's, there's always gonna be people like, like that. You know, he's not gonna really be putting out new music. Which, what do you have yeah. favorite movie music to maybe work out to? Like favorite? You had a, like a playlist set. Music. Did I say movie? Yeah, you said movie. <laughs> so music, right? Yeah, music. So music iron to bad it, boys. it all de- it all depends. <laughs> Sometimes it all depends what lift I have that day, how and yeah. what mood I'm feeling. So. You know, it could be Lincoln Park. Mm-hmm. I'll go straight Lincoln Park, Lincoln like Park. nonstop. I remember you used to used to put on music when we were in Shrek the Fitness last year. Oh yeah, and that was that was good. And it was always such a struggle because people would try to take the music and they would never like have the right songs to play. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, sometimes I listen to hip hop, but sometimes I just need motivational music to go through my ears. So I'll just find something on YouTube and it'll be like an hour and a half of a playlist and I'm listening to guys like David Goggins, mm. The Rock, um, other Navy SEAL guys, or, you know, there's a bunch of guys out there that just have that mindset where it's like, I need to listen to, to them because it makes me stay on the balls of my feet mm. and want to, mm. you know, keep staying, so keep pushing in life, you know what I'm saying? So, that's how. That's what I, I I flow with. You mentioned uh like rappers you listen to in high school. Like obviously this is like a student podcast. Do you have any like funny high school memories Ooh. you want to share? Great high school. You know what? I I wish I had some f- funny high school memories, but you know, considering not in high school, I was like pretty like laid back, just mm. chill. I did like I went to Marcin Scan in high school, so. A lot of people that I know from grammar school, which was St. Helena's, I end up they went to my senior scanner high school. Um, so I knew a, a lot of people there, but at that time, you know, I was just I like to keep sometimes I keep my, my circle like small. Yeah, I know I like I knew all of my classmates and stuff, but it was just I wasn't branching out, out to everybody that I didn't need to because that wasn't my vibe yeah. half the time. Yeah. Um so and at that time too, I was a big boy. So you talking about <laughs> that time up to sophomore year, I was like two ninety seven, and then I lost all the weight during my junior high school. That's awesome. That's and awesome. you know, you know, you just you just rock with some people, and then you, some people that you don't, and some people you just like, I I like you just let go, let go. Like some people said, hey, are we gonna stay friends after high school? And I was honest, but I was like, nah, <laughs> I'm moving I'm on. I'm God, bro. I'm, I'm playing rugby. On. I'm God. You know, I'm moving on because I was like, I'm going on to college to go better myself, do uh, bigger and better things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I have my older siblings. They said, you know, sometimes your high school friends, you know, you might have like a few of them. And then college, your college friends will be your friends. But just like I came here and, you know, with the basketball team, I said, listen, some of you guys will be friends in college and some of you guys will not like once you finish college but if you can stay close that would be great 
you know, you guys got you guys can remember each other, all the good times and the bonding times. So, yeah, you know. You want to talk about what that uh, weight loss journey was like? I remember you, you gave a little bit of it when I was a freshman during the nutrition. I had class. oh, Dude, I had that question, then I forgot it, and I was like, "What was that question?" Yeah. And then oh, right. when you, oh, right. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it just hit me where I had a marking point was two ninety seven, and um, my best friend he was always into working out, and he said, "You know, let's 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 go hit the gym a little bit." And I said, "All right, cool." You know, we was lifting weights and then hitting the in the hitting the cardio, but then you know he went to. I said, you know, I'm going to just go do a lot of cardio. And at that time, you know, you're young. You're at 16, I was like, what do I know? You know, I'm just trying to lose weight. I just care about losing weight. So what I did was um, I went on a weight loss journey from, like, maybe June or no, or September. Like, in the summertime, at the age of – at the end of my sophomore year, I lost, like, a little bit of weight, like maybe, like, 20 pounds. And then by November, I took a series where I said by June – 20th i'll get down to 220 three days beforehand i i got i got that three days beforehand i got down to 220 and i said am i comfortable yeah my no so i dropped down to 190 mm-hmm. by enter by the time i got into my, my senior high school and then once i started lifting weights i went up to 210 so that journey was incredible because i was wearing a size 3x shirt button down shirt my waist size was like 48 waist size so you're talking about Big boy. <laughs> and did I want to buy clothes at that time while I was losing weight? No. I wear the same, my, my not the same shirt physically every day, but I have multiple shirts. I wore the, my size big shirt because I wanted to remind myself that you're doing this for a reason because when you're losing weight, you have to have a purpose as to why you're doing it. And I thought about my mother. I said, there's a, there's a saying that, that's out there, no child should bury the mother. No, no, I mean, no, no mother should bury the child, a child should bury their mother. You know, what what would it look like if I was six feet under and my mother's still living today where it's like, you know, and then she has to go visit me at my grave. That's how deep I went. Mm. And then, you know, think about my family, you know, my my brothers and, you know, having nieces and nephews. You know, I have three nephews now and two nieces. So I got I got to see them. So because I want to be there for him. So, you know, when you when you when I went on my weight loss, I was just I thought about more about my mother where I was like, you know, I need to be there for her growing up and then because eventually i gotta take i want to take care of her so that was my weight loss journey you know that's awesome what yeah. do you say for some kids who you know there's a lot of things where like oh i can't i can't do this because I, I don't have access to a gym i can't do this because i don't have access to this and that what do you like what, what are some things that anyone can do you can really do definitely listen i could say listen if you can work out go for a walk go for a run if you're at home i know sometimes it could be boredom where it's like you don't get that drive to be at home and doing a workout. That's why I said, listen, if you could do 20 minutes of a specific body weight workout and attack it as hard as you can, that 20 minutes is better than no workout. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you could do 20 to 40 minutes, you understand? And if it's yoga, you got to just, you got to want it. So if you're somebody that's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I'll just say, talk to me tomorrow. Let me know when you're ready. Cause you can't. Sometimes you can't wait for certain people to. It's you can't hold their hand, and that's why I'm learning a lot more today. I don't like to hold people's hands to say, "I got you, come on." Cause honestly, I had to put my mindset to do what I need to do for myself. People don't. I I'm a certified trainer today. Sometimes people don't ask me how do I stay motivated. I motivate other people, but who motivates me? You know, and I, how do I have that drive to go each and every day to go work out? So, you know, you just got to want it and 20 minutes is better than none. So if you can start with 20 minutes, then build to 25, then 30, you'll, you'll see what, what's it all about. That was great. Well, and that's a, that's a great note to end on. Our producer, Colin, has been yelling at me to end this for about five minutes now. <laughs> what? Yo, I'm enjoying this podcast, I know, man. I know, I know. Yeah, that's a little bit of time. On the yeah, that's that's little bit of time. So much- that's Maybe we'll have a part two with Mr. Newell. Yo, we, we gotta do we a gotta part two. You want a part two with Mr. Newell? We gotta do a part two. Put it in the comments in Schoology. Drop a Schoology like. <laughs> Drop a Schoology like, please. I like seeing those smiley faces. All right. Thank, thank you, you to so Mr. Newell. Thank A-train, you to Mr. Newell, Mr. Newell for coming on. That's thank right. Thank you to FPTV for helping us out. And um, yeah, I guess we'll see you guys Blessings. Next time. Blessings, mm. fellas. Blessings.